Loving God, whose son was both victim and victor, we cry to you for those who have suffered sexual abuse. Be with them in their confusion and pain. Heal the wounds of body and mind. Break open the prisons of fear, self-doubt, and despair. And strengthen them to face the future with faith, hope, and courage. Reach out to them with your love, that they may be made whole in body, mind, and spirit through the healing presence of the suffering Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We posted this prayer on our All Saints Facebook page this week with a reminder that no matter where you are in life, no matter the circumstances, hold on to this truth. God loves you and you are not alone. Words that many of us needed to hear this week. Words central to our lives as followers of Jesus. Because no matter what, God loves you. And no matter what, you are not alone. You matter, your experience matters. The book of Mark focuses a lot on the suffering of Jesus. Pain seems to have some privilege in the way that Mark preaches the gospel. He keeps it real. You see, Mark is a truth teller because even today, many travel a trail of tears. But the level of pain and the type of pain vary. But the truth is that life is not a bouquet of sweet-smelling roses. There are thorns and scratches. There is sin and brokenness. During the time of Mark, children of the Greco-Roman world were held in very low uh, low esteem, which is why Jesus embraces them as a sign of his own self-identification with the least of these with those who were oppressed and abused. They were present throughout the book of Mark, but we never hear their voice. The silencing and ignoring of children then and those oppressed by privilege today is a form of violence. It is a tactic to silence potential victims. In Mark, their physical bodies are there, but we never hear from them. They may even be healed, but they never speak. They are silenced in Mark and in the discussion about sexual violence. We can barely hear any echo of the still small voice of the oppressed because those in positions of power and privilege ignore, talk over, bully, and often do it without even or ever realizing it. This happens with the disciples in the story from Mark today. You see, they once tried to stop a person from casting out demons in the name of Jesus because, well, that person just wasn't one of them. They were not part of the inner circle. They didn't have the same training. They didn't come from the same places of power or privilege. Yes, the disciples were special people. They were chosen with care to provide important support to Jesus' ministry. And they were essential in spreading the gospel after his ascension. But today's gospel suggests that at times, well, they were a little too impressed by just how special they were. After all, it was just in last week's gospel that they had been arguing with one another over who among them was the greatest, an argument we hear in our world today. How quickly do they and we default to that person? Those folks, they're not one of us. We often exclude and judge those who are not one of the good old boys or someone from our alma mater or our neighborhood or even our church. Are we sure that the gospel wasn't written recently? This week's gospel reminds us 
that we and others use these things as stumbling blocks, whether we know it, whether we remember it or not. Jesus calls the disciples to focus on doing God's work. He reminds them and us that there are others, even those beyond the 12, even those beyond All Saints Church, who have a vital part in God's work, and that they will be rewarded even if they are not a follower of Jesus. He also warns that even followers commit errors that cause themselves and others like children to go astray. Now, the reality is that anyone can stumble. But Jesus encourages us all to be ruthless about rooting out anything in our lives that might distract us from God's work, that might be or become a stumbling block for ourselves or for others. Jesus taught this and the disciples by having a child physically present with them. Several times over chapters 9 and 10, there are references of that child he speaks of today or children in general. This makes our text framed importantly by these words. If any of you put a stumbling block before any one of these little ones, before any one of these folks you have power and privilege over, I don't need to tell you that this has been a week full of stumbling blocks. So what does Jesus in the book of Mark have to say to us today about these things? As I wrestled with this text, as I read and read and reached out to colleagues, one wise one from my seminary days suggested picking up our trusty Harper Collins study Bibles that were issued to us during seminary and to read the notes for this gospel. The notes section, you know that fine little print at the bottom of the page that we often skip over. I admit it wasn't where I started this week. But the note that this text is connected to deals with topics related to sexual violence. How timely. The notes are quite blunt given the typically open-ended style of the HarperCollins commentary. It says this about verses 42 to 48. These sayings concern male sexuality in relation to the practice or the temptation to practice the sexual abuse of children and other sexual transgressions. I dropped the Bible. And then I picked it up and went on. The study notes further say they have references to how hand and foot quite innocent to a reader or hearer in English In their original context were references to sexual acts. This isn't about what to do when your hands or your feet or your eyes cause you to stumble in general, but specifically about when you hurt one of these little ones, when you use power and privilege over another. Through images of body parts, Jesus makes clear that stumbling blocks are not other people or things outside of us alone. They are part of us. These stumbling blocks might be events or practices, the way we've always done it, or believing boys will be boys, or our own beliefs or understanding of conflicting events and experiences in our lives. Stumbling blocks that come distinguished as precious body parts are so dangerous that they should be severed. The violence of Jesus' words is inescapable. His over-the-top approach gets the disciples and our attention, and that is the point. The consequences of causing another to stumble are far worse than self-maiming. They are there to protect the vulnerable. the understandings and prohibitions against sexual violence, historically, and this is no surprise, have been lopsided towards men. They have encouraged male sexuality while often neglecting the vulnerable. An example, in biblical times, adultery was a crime only married women could commit 
because it's a matter of protecting the bloodline and the possibility of children. Or in Greco-Roman culture, sexual acts against children by men were not prohibited and even understood to be a somewhat normal part of satisfying male desire unrelated to sexuality. Jesus calls all of this a stumbling block. I'm sure his language may have even been worse. Clearly, I want to use worse language today. But the stumbling blocks echoed in our current rape culture from media and government leaders that it couldn't have happened because if it had, someone would clearly have said something at the time. Stumbling blocks. Our culture and criminal justice system are full of reasons and stumbling blocks that prevent survivors of sexual violence from reporting. Survivors who do come forward often are harassed and blamed for not keeping their mouths shut for how long it took them to remember or report. And they often face a hostile response from police officers and the process of investigating the crime can be so traumatic for the survivor that it's often called the second rape. And after all that, the statistics show the odds are low that the attacker is ever likely to face legal consequences for their actions. Beloveds, no matter how much culture has changed, listening to survivors is what we are called to do. Saying no, it's not okay to those who use power and privilege to abuse is what we are called to do. And if we are silent, we are stumbling blocks. The good news is that Jesus completely and thoroughly understands suffering and pain. Jesus is present for all survivors. He says, I believe you. I want you to know that you are beloved that you will heal, that you will recover, and you, you are not alone. 